Hello again, everyone. I made a video back in January about video cutting or trimming tools. I looked at two different tools, and at the time there was actually a third one I was interested in showing, but I was having trouble running it. It was crashing and also wouldn't export video once you had made the cuts. The unfortunate part was it has a very nice UI and some additional features that the other two don't have. Well, I should say didn't have, because that's kind of the point of this video. So if I look at VidCutter, in particular, they had this chapter concept, which is a clip index. As you were making the clips and cuts, it was adding them to this nice little panel here on the side, and you can actually see the cuts when they started, when they ended. And then you could do things like which ones to include, and just some other nice ways to interact with the clips that you had made. So it was unfortunate I couldn't use this one or show it, because of those issues. It hasn't been updated in a few years. There is a GitHub issue where they're talking about someone else adopting the project and, and taking over for it. So hopefully that happens. And if it does, then I will certainly give it another shot. But in the meantime, I had shown Lossless Cut. And if I look back at the video, this was in January. If I look back now at releases, shortly thereafter, on February 14th, there was a major rewrite, and they added a bunch of new things in here. So as I sort of come through and look at the releases, there was a new release pretty much every few days. It was It's pretty incredible. And now we get all the way up to the current stable release is 3.13. But what I'm going to show here is the 3.16.4 which was released about 10 days ago. And it's just a few bug fixes, really not a lot of additional features, so you're certainly welcome to run 3.13. Although I suspect that by the time you watch this video, there are probably gonna be several more versions ahead given the pace that they're going right now. All right, so let's take a look at that old version next to the new version. So the one I have here on the left is version 2.62, and the one I have on the right is 3.16.4. So we've got quite a few versions in between the two, and you can see the evolution here. It's still a very similar UI, but one of the things I noticed initially when I started using this was it doesn't really have settings per se, and also things like multiple clips. You had to do things like, let me just drag a video in here. So to make my clips, I would still do the in, move up, O for out, I for in, O for out, but if I wanted to make another cut, I actually had to add another cut segment manually and come say out. And so kind of get the point here. Also, there's no list of cuts. There are very few sort of controls here. And really all you get are some keyboard shortcuts and a few buttons, but again, this was perfectly usable for what you were doing with it. One thing that I found to be a little difficult was this was a one and done situation. So you weren't really saving your cuts. You would do the work here and you could do export as individual clips or a merge clip. So that was still in there, but you weren't able to really save what you did. So if I were to just close this now, it's, it's gone. So maybe I was working on something and needed to come back to it, and that just wasn't really possible. So now, in the new version, you can see we have some additional things here, like some new settings and some additional buttons here. And also, you'll see when I bring a video in and start making cuts, there's a pretty considerable difference in the behavior. So let's pull this in. And now I'm gonna say in and out. So there's my first clip. And I'll come down a little bit, in, out, and this is I and O. Do another one, in, out, and one more, in, out. Now you see we have the segments themselves listed on the sidebar, and we can do some interesting things with those, and I'll get back to that in just a second. But we can also do things like adding additional tracks. So you could mix in other 
content, other tracks, other audio, video. You can choose whether or not to keep the audio. So you can just strip out audio and keep the video itself. There are now audio waveforms. So if I click on that, it says to zoom in. So let me zoom in to 64 times. And here you go. Obviously not perfect, but it gives you an idea of the audio that's behind the video here. You also see the option here for show thumbnails. So that's going to give us some little video thumbnails. And I can just toggle those on and off. Under settings, we have some different options here, whether we want to auto merge the segments or keep them separate. Nearest keyframe or normal cut. And I'm not really going to get into the difference between normal cuts and keyframes. Keyframes are usually better. Um, if you'd like to research that, I'll actually put a link to what keyframes are and why they're important in video in the description. We have the cutting mode itself. So you can choose to either keep what you're clipping or remove those portions from the video. So you may have a workflow where it's a very long video and you just need to cut one piece out of the middle rather than saying in and out and then skipping that piece and then in and out on the end. You can say remove and then just select the one piece you want to cut out and it will remove it instead of keeping it. And also there's an option now for auto save project and you'll see where that comes in. So now as I'm making these cuts, if I were to look back in this folder, you see now there's a CSV file. If I were to look at that, my cuts here and the lengths along with them are showing up and I'll just leave that up in the background. Now, if I were to come in here to these segments themselves, I can do some things like naming them. Let's call this intro and demo one. All right, so now they have names in there as well. So I can easily identify which clips are which. The color already helps, but in case I had lots and lots of clips and the colors were similar, I could always uh, identify them by the name. The other neat thing here is I can change the order. So if I wanted this to actually be the last one, I could say four, and now demo one becomes the last one. Now chronologically in the timeline, it's still gonna be where it is, but when I export it, it will put this piece after these other segments. So you may have recorded something out of order, and this is a straightforward way to just say, okay, I want this piece somewhere else in the timeline. So very, very interesting option there. Can remove the segments as well. And when I'm all done, I can choose to export them. Now it's gonna export these merged as a single file. And you see how fast it is, which again is the reason to use a tool like this in the first place is that you can quickly do these things. The tool itself is very easy to use, the UI, get your clips the way you want them. And then the export, instead of having to re-render, just pushes them out as merged clips without having to uh, re-render, remux, whatever. So now I have my merged cut here, which is five and a half minutes long out of the total 15 minutes. So that was just these pieces here. And yeah, that's it. There's, there's other stuff in here that's worth looking at. And I'm just for the sake of keeping this brief and just introducing the topic and making sure that people are aware that there's a new version out there. Uh, I'll let you discover those for yourself. I guess the one teaser I'll say is that you can also use this to remux or to change the output format. So this would be a good tool if you recorded a video in one format and wanted to just save it out as a different format. You could very easily just open that video, choose a different container and export it and you're done. There you go. Lossless Cut is on a wild tear, adding a bunch of new features and really just doing something special. Wanted to call attention to it not sure how many people are aware of this tool, but hopefully this is something that would benefit you. And if so, go check it out. All right. Well, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did consider thumbs up, if you really liked it, subscribe. And if you didn't like it, thumbs down or however you felt about it, just be honest. I appreciate it. 
comments, questions, feedback, anything like that below. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.